it's V from the A-Team, and on today's 4-Minute Film School, we are going from this to this. It is night interiors on any budget. Let's go. I'm here with Hunter Gulan, who is a commercial director of photography in the music video and fashion spaces. So today, what kind of scene are we putting together? Uh, so for this scene, we wanted to do a night interior where there's a girl sitting at home waiting for her significant other. Dude comes home, tries to sneak in. Right when he shuts the door, the lights turn on. He's caught. He's busted. So for night interiors, obviously, you want to have some kind of moonlight coming in to signal that it is night. Yeah. We had a 120D camera left coming through the window through an, an opal frost, just a light diffusion. Since we had the 120D coming through the opal on the side, we put the Nova panel with full CTB through the back window. Since the 120D coming through the window was uh, balanced at 5600 Kelvin, we put a double CTB on that to give it that blue feel. So to match the Nova panel, we actually adjusted the internal settings to full CTB and 5600 as well. You also had a third light, which was practical. And that was her cell phone. We had her hold a phone as if she was texting, but was giving her some light on her face as well. Now for her partner that enters the room through the door, how did you light him for his uh, medium shot? We started out with a small MC rigged overhead and slightly behind him as a backlight to give him some definition around his hair and his shoulders. So then our key light was the Nova. We positioned it so it was hitting uh, talent more from the side and giving that um, high contrast ratio. You did something really cool here for the lighting gag. You did it on an insert of his hand instead of in the wide or any of their close-ups. Why did you decide to do it in the insert? Because it was a lot more feasible to do it with one or two lights that way than doing it in the wide shot with five or six lights simultaneously turning on or off. So the insert was lit solely with the Nova panel coming through the curtains, same position as it was on his medium shot. When the lights turned on, we went up on a lantern rigged overhead with a CTO to make it match the lamp practical, which also turned on simultaneously. So what did you do for the practicals? We had the practicals on because without these practicals, it wouldn't give us motivation to bring up the scene with the tungsten lights that we had in place. We cut a small square piece of diffusion just to spread that light a little bit more and get rid of those harsh shadows on the wall. So how did you augment those practicals? We started out with two 300Ds camera left and camera right, cross-keying talent, and generally giving a little fill throughout the scene. To augment the practicals a little bit more, we had the lantern rigged in the back corner, camera right, giving our male talent a little bit of definition. So our female talent, we had a 672 with a CTO filter, giving her a little bit of a backlight, a little bit of a definition, popping her a little bit more. All right, let's take a look at that scene. So we also care about your wallet and we want to show you how to do this with more budget-friendly lights. So Hunter, what did you do as far as substitutions in this scene? We replaced both the 120D and the Nova, each with a set of three MCs, all set to the same bluish color for that moonlight look. They're magnetic, so you could just magnetize them directly to the C-stand and group them together, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So in the second version, we swapped the lantern out with a 672 with the CTO uh, gel slid into it, um, just to match that same color temperature as the lantern. So in the master, you also had that cross lighting with the 300Ds. So we replaced the two 300Ds with one 672 with a CTO bouncing into a four by foam bounce card back into the scene to kind of lift up the overall ambience of the scene that the 300Ds were providing in the first version. So to compensate for the smaller unit, obviously you don't have as much output, 
So I just opened up a couple stops uh, on my lens and that did the trick. So let's take a look at this whole scene now with the more budget friendly lights. So of course it looks good, you say, with a cinema camera, but I don't have a cinema camera. We also wanna show you that you can still use a phone and have cheap lighting and have it look good. Today, technology is so good that any camera can shine with good lighting. Let's see. All right, Hunter, so when you're shooting a scene like this that is indoor but with moonlight, what are some takeaways? Uh, so some takeaways are number one, using a soft blue light source to emulate moonlight. And number two is contrasting that blue light with something warm like the practicals inside to give your image a, a more dynamic look. The third big takeaway is work smarter, not harder. It was a lot easier to do the lighting gig in a close-up with two lights as compared to a wide shot with five or six plus lights. Work smarter, not harder. That's a really good tip. And it brings me to the comment question of this video, which is, what is the time that you had to use moonlight in your scene? Or if you haven't used moonlight, how would you use it? Let us know in the comments below. And the best answer is going to win an MC light, which is our little RGB panel that we used in this video. If you enjoy 4-Minute Film School, if you thought this episode was useful to you, then go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to our channel. That's it for us. Our social media links will be down below and have a great day. Bye.